I would take it as far as to say, like, if you're new to running, uh, run as if your back hurts. As you're getting yourself introduced to, as you start running again, you got to do what you did. Do run walks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this is an example of something you could do. Let's say that you got your Apple Watch or whatever device you have and you want to go for a mile. Don't run the mile. Okay, do a do some light jogging for a little bit, then walk and do it while keeping your breath in control. Don't don't get yourself out of breath. Don't kill yourself doing this, because what's going to happen is if you haven't been doing any type of running or jogging for a long time, you're going to feel after your first session or two, you're going to feel some pain on the bottom of your foot. You're going to feel some pain in your Achilles. Your calves might feel real tight. Right. So you want to give yourself, you want to ease yourself into this volume. It's like if you went to the gym, you're not going to do fucking 20 sets of arms on day one. And I, when people start running, because it's such a normal movement, that's a place where more often than not, people bite off way more than they can chew. And they're like, oh, fuck, my knees hurt, my hips hurt, my back hurts. And then there's the, even the, the aspect of uh, the way you strike your foot on the ground. Right. If you if you start doing some jogging or running and you're heel striking each step, heel to forefoot, you might notice that you're going to be feeling some pain in certain places. So I know people go back and forth and where to strike. <laughs> but I mean, from what I've been looking up in terms of people looking at how individuals with good feet strike the ground, it should probably be midfoot to forefoot. It shouldn't be you shouldn't be using your heel that often when you're running. What do you think about that? <clears throat> if you can't do it barefoot then it's not natural, right? Like if, so take that for whatever it's worth. Like if you're going to run barefoot, then you are going to run quite differently. Yeah. It's going to mainly be on your toes. Um, however, like it doesn't make sense to try to run around everywhere barefoot. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, the blacktop and the concrete and- Concrete itself isn't a natural thing. <laughs> rocks and bottles yeah. and like all this shit, you know, you got to- you know, you got to really be careful and uh, protecting your feet is super important for somebody that's going to start to take more steps mm -hmm. or for somebody that's going to start to run. When it comes to jogging, I don't think that people are aware of this fact, but jogging is made up. Jogging is as made up as a bicep curl with an easy curl bar or as made up as a tricep pushdown. It was invented and created by, our, created by one of the co-founders of Nike. You can look all this up. This is information that's been out there for a long time. So jogging is a particular technique. And I don't think people understand that or realize that. Because really? people are like, hey, you know what, you dumbass, when you're jogging, your technique's wrong because you're heel striking. And it's like, oh, really? Well, that's actually impossible because running is an activity that was made up and it involves heel striking and rolling on your foot. But, I mean, why did they create that that way? They created it because they created a nice shoe that's comfortable for that. Mm -hmm. And much like any other company, my company, anybody else's company, I believe it was done with good intentions. I believe it was done like, hey, let's get people to move. Let's get people to exercise. Yeah. What's one of the, what's one of the toughest things with people running? It's like it hurts their feet. It hurts their lower back. It hurts their knees. Well, let's give them a good cushion to run on. So I don't mm. think it was just a profit thing. I don't think the guy was like, let's make tons of money and let's do this whole thing this way. Um, but I think... Uh, I think maybe over time it turned to that because they're like, fuck, we can sell a lot of shoes this way. Yeah. So jogging is in its own separate category. I also, I also put, I personally put sprinting in a different category too. Mm -hmm. Sprinting is like a, just a different animal. Um, I would like for everybody to be able to possess the ability to do some form of sprint, uh, but it's just, a, it's just a tougher thing to get people into. Like if we can get people to, if we can get people to jog and we can get people to run a little bit, that would be amazing. Yeah. The sprinting part of it, that's a tougher one to figure out. But man, you know what? If you're sprinting at 60 years old, that's a really good sign that your body's functioning really well. Mm -hmm. and, and all of this stuff, though, it, it's a progression. Like, let's let's think about what, what most people are going to have to progress to from step zero to step one. It's going to be probably the strength of your feet. Because as you were saying, like, if you're wearing, a, like, padded shoes everywhere, um, and you go and you try to run in some Vivos or some fucking Vibrams, mm -hmm. right? Number one, if you tried to do it like you typically would when you're heel striking, you'd feel a lot of pain. Like that's why, I mean, they, they've Tell looked her. at the, they looked at the Hadza and a lot of these other tribes, or I think it's the Kalahari tribe or whatever. Um, and these are modern day hunter gatherers and they looked at how they ran and how they're hunting. It's all 
midfoot, forefoot. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they're wearing sandals, it's all midfoot, forefoot. They never really heel strike anything, right? So I'm not saying that people, you, if, if you do that, you shouldn't, but I would suggest that you try to strengthen your feet so that you have the capacity to probably go on your midfoot or your forefoot. 100%. You know, get out of your shoes more often if you can. Um, fuck, man, maybe even take a yoga class because that's an hour where you're not in a shoe mm -hmm. and you're on a mat. Maybe do some jujitsu. Again, that's another opportunity. I think a lot of people that do jujitsu, they're like, man, my knees and elbows and my feet are really, <laughs> and fingers, right? Initially, yeah. Yeah, you feel like, a lot of that. All that shit's like really, because uh, it's getting worked in some ways that maybe it just never has. So mm -hmm. um, anytime you have an opportunity to take your shoes and socks off, uh, I think you should do so. Um, walking outside in the morning is something I do every morning and I just walk in the grass and I walk around for, I don't walk around very long, probably out there for like three minutes, mm -hmm. but I do it, you know, I should probably be out there a little longer, but, um, any opportunity you can have. And even just more on a side note, if you're like, fuck all this, man, these guys are giving me way too much shit to add <laughs> to my life. Yeah. Try to find some sort of time where you can get barefoot and, uh, you know, go on a beach or, uh. Just again, just be mindful of it. Can I take in this situation? Is it okay for me to take my shoes and socks off? And if mm -hmm. it is, you're training your feet while you're like walking on the beach with your girl or something, you know? So it's, I, I know we're ridiculous. I know that we white like to exercise all day. So I, I always try to keep that in mind, but um, it is one more thing that can be helpful to you. And you can also just occasionally go to a field. I know you're enjoying this clip, but listen up. We have this beef company, Piedmontese Beef, that no matter what diet you're doing, whether it's low-fat, high-fat, carnivore, keto, whatever, they have perfect cuts that are going to fit your diet perfectly. And the cool thing, Andrew, mm -hmm. less connective tissue, so you're not going to have those gristly, nasty things that you have to spit out when you eat beef. That's what those are? That's what those are. Oh, and so Piedmontese doesn't have that. They don't have that because the cows are jacked, lack of connective mm -hmm. tissue, buttery when you cut into it. Amazing taste. So, Andrew, how can they get some Piedmontese? Yes, sir. It's over at Piedmontese. Com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E dot -E -E com. At checkout, enter promo code POWER for 25% off your order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Again, that's at Piedmontese.com, promo code POWER. Let's go ahead and get back to this podcast. And just that could be your training for the day. Yeah. Fuck the gym for a day. Like, just don't go. It's okay. You're not going to die. Mm -hmm. Go to a field and take your shoes and socks off and maybe just walk the field. Yeah. Just walk back and forth. Maybe a little bit of a jog. But back to the topic of like, how do you fucking get started in the first place? You brought it up already. A walk, a walk run or a walk jog is your best. Let's use the word jog, a walk jog. Mm -hmm. Go really fucking slow. I shot a video a couple days ago. I said, slow and low. Stay low and move super slow. I would say, I would take it as far as to say, like if you're new to running, uh, run as if your back hurts. Like, like, like be fucking protected. You know how you move when you really slip something in your back and you're like, you kind of you brace everything. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. You got the perfect. <laughs> he looked just like me when he did that. <laughs> I was channeling yeah, you. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Like move like you already kind of got hurt. Like Super the, bouncy, like soft. Yeah. We have good shocks. Yeah. And over time, then you want to really try to loosen your body up. And make sure your head's kind of neutral and you want to do the three things that Zach Bitter shared with me that I think are really important, which is uh, lean forward, drive your knees up, and drive your elbows back. Mm -hmm. That's really simple. Mm -hmm. Lean forward, drive the knees forward, drive the elbow back. People get really obsessed with their stride yeah. and they get really concerned about, in my experience, anytime I thought like, oh, let's open up my, you know, I'm going to open up my stride. I've gotten hurt every time. It's led to just pure disappointment mm -hmm. on my end. And it's probably, you know, for other reasons, but um, don't really worry about that too much. In fact, I would say just keep the stride, keep it short, keep it sweet. And you want to be able to live to be able to run another day. And one thing of all of this is like, you were saying, number one, run like you hurt yourself. But number two, be kind to yourself through this process. Because even for me, when I started getting into running and I'm like, God dang, uh, this capacity, I used to have this capacity when I played sports and now it's like, I, I feel old. Right. <laughs> so I had to be kind enough to myself to be like, okay, this is going to be something that I'm not going to get used to in just a few weeks. Just like when I started jujitsu and it took me a while to be able to get good. Mm -hmm. It's going to take me a while to get good at this. And it's been a long time since I've practiced. So understand that just after a few weeks, you're not going to be an 
unless this is something you've done often, you're not going to feel great, but there will be progress there. So give yourself literal months, give yourself slow progress, stay out of pain. When you're running, try to keep a pace where like, don't, don't push yourself too hard. You know what I mean? Try to keep a pace where you can like, maybe you can have a conversation with someone and your breathing's under control. Don't go to a place where like you don't have control of that because you want to slowly inch yourself forward to be able to do this for miles. And you, so you'll be able to have a bigger capacity. But if you rush yourself too fast, there's a good chance you could injure yourself. And then you're going to be one of those people that's like, oh, you know, running's not for me. It's just going to hurt my knees, blah, blah, blah. Your body needs time to adapt to what you're doing. Pat Project family, we appreciate you checking out this clip. Check out another one. Just, just, just go check out another one. Or comment down below and let us know what you liked about this one. But we love you guys. And we're going to keep bringing you the heat. So comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Okay? Peace.